Welcome back to 5-Minute EKG, where we talk about a specific EKG topic in around 5 minutes. I am the whiteboard doctor, and today we are going to be talking about rate. Um, so when talking about rate, uh, just very introductory things, um, you can have a slow, normal, or fast rate. So slow rate is bradycardia, and bradycardia is less than 60 beats per minute. So we'll do less than 60, and then BPM, beats per minute. A normal rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. And a fast rate, or tachycardia, which I'll abbreviate as tachy, is greater than 100 beats per minute. When calculating rate, um, there are a few things you have to pay attention to. Um, first, and this only comes into play when there's pathology, is, is the atrial and ventricular rate the same? So when looking at the atrial rate, right, we're looking at the atrial waves, which is the P waves, and you're calculating the number of P waves. When we're looking at the ventricular weight rate, you're looking at the QRS complexes. Now, in sinus rhythm, um, there's a QRS complex after every P and a P before every QRS, so the ventricular rates equal the atrial rates. But if there's pathology, if there's a block, an arrhythmia, or something, you might have a ventricular rate that does not equal the atrial rate, so you need to calculate them separately. Um, for the rest of this discussion, um, we will assume that there is no pathology, and thus we will just calculate one rate for both atria and ventricles. Um, second thing when you're calculating rate is there's several different uh, ways to do it, and some of them are dependent on the, uh, the actual rate and the rhythm. So in a regular rhythm that is somewhat of a normal rate, there's two different ways that you can calculate. So we'll say this is a regular rhythm. The first way is you can actually do 300 divided by the number of large boxes, LBs, between the R to R interval. So we have R and we have R, and the space between them is the interval. So what we're going to count is the number of large boxes between this interval. And we'll take 300 divided by that. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that is actually the wrong math, right? Because this is not a box here. So it's actually going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 large boxes. So if we do 300 divided by 4, we get a rate of 75, which is normal, right, between 60 and 100. Um, so what's kind of a cheating way we can do this? Well, a cheating way we can do this is you can actually pre-label, so you still look at the first R, and you want to find an R that lays somewhat on a line of a big box. So this is relatively close. And then you can actually label each additional box, 300 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So this is a generic labeling. It's not based just on this EKG. What you do is you look to this first R, and then you find where the next R falls. And the next R falls on 75. So that's consistent. So why does this work? What is this 300 number? Where did we get it from? Well, where we got it from is that um, the total time of this EKG, right, from start to finish, is 10 seconds. And each large box is 0.2 seconds. So what this is going to equal is the number of large boxes on the entire strip, right? But that's only over 10 seconds. The heart rate is over 60 seconds, right? So you have to multiply this by 6, and that actually equals 300. So 300 is the number of large boxes in 60 seconds. So when we look at R to R, that's one beat, and we look at the number of boxes in one beat, and then we divide 300 by that number to get the number of beats in 60 seconds. So that works for regular rhythms that are relatively normal rate. So what if you have a very fast rate where you can't use large boxes? Well, for that, so we'll just say very fast, you can do something very similar but using small boxes. So you actually do 1,500 divided by the number of 
small boxes between the R to R. This 1500 came from the exact same math, except you're going to use 0 0.04 seconds as the denominator, because that's the number of seconds in each little box. So you will divide 1500 divided by the number of small boxes between the R to R interval. So that's for very fast rates, just because you can't use the large boxes. Kind of a more fail-safe thing to do, especially if you have very slow rates or irregular rates, is just to go back, and we already said this, but remember from the start to the finish of this EKG is 10 seconds. Each R is one beat of the heart. So I can actually count the number of R's in 10 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's how many beats there are in 10 seconds. Obviously you have to multiply that by six. So we'll go over here. 12 times six equals 72 beats per minute. So not quite 75, but very, very close. Um, and this, using this third method, um, if you have any regular rhythm that you didn't realize, or if it's too slow um, to calculate using the large box method, um, this method will give you a more accurate picture. So those are three different ways to calculate the rate. Remember, if there's pathology, calculate the ventricular and atrial rate separately. Um, otherwise, um, oftentimes the EKG gives you a rate. You should double check it on your own, but usually the computerized um, rate is the correct rate, which is more than can be said for most of the computerized interpretations. Um, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys again on one of the future videos, and wish you the best. Bye.